Listening forty seven. Listen and read. What is the TV program about? Please don't film the river yet. It isn't clean. Can you film the aquarium or the reptile house first? I'm Karen. I'm the presenter. What happened to the river? Someone dumped lots of rubbish in it. We're helping the park keepers to clean up and save the birds. Five minutes later. Okay, we're going to make a different program. We're going to film you cleaning up. It will be a great show. Really? That's so exciting. We're going to be on TV. Later that week, the children have worked hard all afternoon. Oh look, there I am. <laughs> And there's Libby. We're very glad that the river is safe again. Now we're going to take all the litter to the recycling centre. Thanks to the DSD Club for all their help. They can have free visits to the wildlife park any time. Wow, that's great! I'm going to go next weekend. Me too, but this time I'm not going to go in the river. <laughs> <laughs> Listening forty-eight. Listen and repeat. Enclosure. Picnic area. Pool. Reptile house, aviary, insect house, aquarium, gift shop. Listening forty nine. Listen and repeat. Keep. Keeper. Present. Presenter. Sing. Singer. Invent. Inventor. Act. Actor. Visit. Visitor. Listening fifty. Listen and read. What are they going to do? The classes in my school are going to adopt wild animals. The animals aren't going to live in our houses. They're going to stay in the zoo. We are going to give some money to the zoo to look after the animals. My class is going to adopt a tiger. Because they're beautiful animals. Listening fifty one, listen and read. Does Chip try to help? Oh dear, my cat is in the tree and it can't get down. It's going to fall. Look, Chip is going to help my cat. He's going to climb the tree. Oh dear, the cat is safe, but Chip can't get down. Silly Chip. He's going to be there all day.、Uh, help. Listening fifty-two. Listen and read. The Zoological Society of London (ZSL) tries to breed endangered species and prevent animals from becoming extinct. This is important work. 
because we can learn a lot from wild animals, but when they are extinct, they are gone forever. Seven years ago, the ZSL opened Gorilla Kingdom, a wonderful gorilla enclosure at London Zoo, with waterfalls, warm rocks, hills, plants, and birds. Today, three gorillas live in Gorilla Kingdom. Zaire is thirty-nine. She has been at London Zoo since nineteen eighty-four. She is very playful, but she is sometimes naughty too. Zaire can often be shy. It takes time for her to get to know new people, but she always makes friends in the end. Effie is twenty-one. She used to live in Germany, but she arrived at London Zoo in two thousand and seven. Effie loves small children, and she always greets them when they come and visit. Juki is the youngest gorilla at London Zoo. She's only fourteen years old. Juki is very funny. She often steals Zaire's food, but Zaire doesn't mind. She thinks Juki is wonderful. In the wild, the main threat to gorillas is loss of habitat. The ZSL hopes that the enclosure will make the gorillas feel happy and safe. They are hoping to have a baby gorilla at Gorilla Kingdom soon. It will be the first step to increasing the gorilla population. Listening fifty-three. Listen. What are the men talking about? Number one. Today we're talking about endangered species. Lee Masters is a keeper at London Zoo. Lee, can you tell us about some endangered species? Well, the giant panda is the most famous endangered species. The giant panda is a large mammal. It's black and white, and it's between a hundred and fifty and a hundred and eighty centimeters long. One point eight meters. Yes, the panda is a big animal. It weighs between eighty and a hundred and fifty-one kilograms. That's the same as two men. Pandas live in hills and mountains in China. The main threat to the panda is loss of habitat. I see. Number two. What about endangered birds? Well, the great green macaw is one example of an endangered bird. It's between eighty-five and ninety centimeters long. And what's its weight? It weighs about one kilogram. One kilogram? That's quite heavy. Yes, it's a big bird. The great green macaw is also endangered because of loss of habitat. It lives in rainforests, but people are cutting down the trees. That's sad. Yes. Number three. Another problem. Is that people kill animals for food or sport, like the southern bluefin tuna? The bluefin tuna is a large fish. It is up to four hundred and thirty centimeters long. Wow, four hundred and thirty centimeters! Yes, it weighs up to nine hundred and ten kilos, so it's as heavy as three horses. The bluefin tuna lives in oceans, but because of fishing, there aren't many left. Listening fifty-four. Listen and write. Sing. I'm going to visit forests to see tigers hunt and run. Then I'll go to the mountains to see pandas in the sun.
Listening 55. Fluency time. 2. Listen and read. What are you reading, Zaid? It's a book about gorillas. I love gorillas, but I think they will be extinct in 50 years. I don't think so. I imagine that there will still be gorillas in 50 years. But I think people need to do more to help endangered species. You're right. Let's look online and find out what we can do. Listening 56. Listen and complete the table. 1. Look, Megan. I've got a new book. It's about dolphins. Let me see. I love dolphins. I think they're very clever animals. You're right. Dolphins work together in groups to catch fish. They're amazing. 2. I like dolphins, but I don't like sharks. They're really scary. I'm sorry, but I don't agree. Sharks don't often hurt people. I think people are more dangerous than sharks. I see your point, but people haven't got big, sharp teeth. 3. I'm not scared of sharks, but I'm scared of snakes. I think they're horrible. I don't think so. Snakes aren't horrible. They're amazing animals. Have you seen the huge snakes in the reptile house at the zoo? No, I haven't. And I'm not going to see them either. 4. What other animals are you scared of, Megan? I'm very scared of wolves. They look really dangerous. But wolves are a kind of dog. You like dogs. That's true, but I don't like wolves. You can't take a wolf to the park. <laughs> no, you can't. Listening 57. Listen and read. Earth Day. What is Earth Day? Earth Day is an international event when people all over the world think about how we can protect our planet. Earth Day takes place on the 22nd of April every year. How did Earth Day start? In 1970, US politician Gaylord Nelson decided that there should be a special day for people to think about how we can work together to take better care of our planet. The first Earth Day took place on the 22nd of April, 1970 in the United States. 20 million people and thousands of local schools and communities took part. Because of the success of the first Earth Day, the government of the United States decided to make new laws to protect the environment. Earth Day soon became an annual event and an international celebration. Why do we need Earth Day? Earth Day is important because we all share the same planet. Sometimes we forget that we are responsible for our planet and that we should protect it for ourselves and for other people. Earth Day is a day for everyone to think about the problems our planet faces, such as climate change, endangered species, 
deforestation and pollution. It's a time for us to think about how we can stop these problems and make our world a cleaner, safer place for all the people and animals on Earth. What do people do on Earth Day? People celebrate Earth Day in many different ways. Some people hold rallies or demonstrations. They make signs with messages about protecting nature and they march in the streets. Sometimes they wear costumes to express their message in a funny way. For example, people in a rally for the protection of endangered species might dress up as endangered animals. Some people plant trees on Earth Day. This is a great activity to do with your family, your friends or your school. You can buy some young trees and plant them in a park. Trees improve our environment by removing dust, pollutants and carbon dioxide from the air. Trees also produce oxygen and provide a home for birds, insects and small animals. Some schools or families go on a trip to explore nature on Earth Day. Getting out in nature is a great way to learn about your planet, your local environment and the amazing plants and animals that live there. Some towns and cities have a car-free day on Earth Day. No cars are allowed to drive around the streets. People walk, cycle or use public transport. This is a great way to help the planet because cars produce a lot of dangerous gases and destroy the ozone layer, which protects our planet from the sun's ultraviolet light. Another great idea is a recycled art competition. Recycled art is becoming more and more popular, and many artists these days use recycled rubbish to make works of art. Some artists use things they find to make interesting sculptures. Others use pieces of plastic, paper, glass or metal to create beautiful pictures. Artist Jane Perkins used old buttons, toys, plastic spoons and other small pieces of rubbish to make this amazing copy of the Mona Lisa. Why not see what you can make with your rubbish on Earth Day? How can we make every day Earth Day? Earth Day is very important, but we should celebrate and take care of our planet every day. You can help to make every day Earth Day by doing a few simple things. Don't use cars to get around. Walk or cycle to school, to the park or to the supermarket. Tell your family and friends to walk or cycle too. It's good for our planet and it's good for your health. Don't drop litter. Pick up litter when you see it on the street, on the beach or in the park. Litter pollutes our planet and puts animals and birds in danger. Recycle your rubbish. Send your rubbish to be recycled or reuse it yourself. Think about ways to use plastic bags, cardboard boxes, glass jars and old newspapers again. Be creative. The Earth is your planet. Take care of it. Listening 58. Listen and read. The Elephant's Child A long time ago, elephants did not have trunks. They had short grey noses. There was a young elephant, the Elephant's Child, who was very curious. He was always asking questions. He lived in Africa, and every time he met a new animal, he asked that animal a question. 
He asked the ostrich why her neck was so long. He asked the hippo why her eyes were red. And he asked the baboon why his face was hairy. He asked questions about everything, and he made all his friends and family very angry. They didn't like answering questions all the time. One morning, the elephant's child asked a new question. What does the crocodile have for dinner? He asked. His family looked scared. Be quiet, they said. The elephant's child went for a walk. Soon he met a parrot. I want to know what the crocodile has for dinner, said the elephant's child. The parrot looked at him. Go to the river and find out, it said. The elephant's child walked and walked. At last, he came to the river. The elephant's child did not know what a crocodile looked like. The first thing he saw was a snake. The snake was sleeping on a rock, but it opened one eye and looked at the elephant's child. Excuse me. Said the elephant's child. Is there a crocodile near here? What a silly question! Said the snake. Excuse me, said the elephant's child. But can you tell me what the crocodile has for dinner? The snake shook its head slowly. That is a very dangerous question," it said. "Go home to your family." So the elephant's child said goodbye to the snake, but he did not go home. He walked along the banks of the river until he saw what he thought was a large piece of wood lying in the mud. But it was not a piece of wood. It was the crocodile. The crocodile opened one eye and winked at the elephant's child. Excuse me," said the elephant's child. "Is there a crocodile near here?" The crocodile opened its other eye. I am a crocodile," it said. The elephant's child sat down in the mud next to the crocodile. "I am so pleased to meet you," he said. "I want to know what you have for dinner." "Come here," said the crocodile. And I will whisper the answer. The elephant's child moved closer to the crocodile, and put his head next to the crocodile's mouth. But the crocodile caught the elephant's nose in its mouth. I think I will have elephant's child for dinner today, it said. The elephant's child was angry. "You're hurting me," he said. He tried to pull his nose from the crocodile's mouth, but the crocodile held on tight. The crocodile pulled, and the elephant's child pulled, and the elephant's nose grew longer and longer. The snake heard the fight and came down from its rock. It wrapped its tail around the elephant's child's legs. The crocodile pulled, and the elephant's child pulled, 
and the snake pulled, and the elephant's nose grew and grew. But the elephant's child and the snake were strong, and suddenly the crocodile let go of the elephant's child and fell back into the river with a loud splash. The elephant's child fell backwards into the mud. He thanked the snake. My nose is the wrong shape now, he said. It was a long trunk, like the noses that all elephants have today. A fly landed on the elephant's back. The elephant's child lifted his trunk and hit the fly with it. Your new nose is very useful," said the snake. Try and eat something now. The elephant's child pulled up some grass with his trunk, and pushed it into his mouth. You are lucky to have a nose like that," said the snake. Now, go home to your family. So the elephant's child walked home. When he was hungry, he pulled fruit down from a tree with his trunk, and he picked grass up from the ground with his trunk. When he felt lonely, he sang through his trunk. And the noise was loud and wonderful. When the elephant's child got home, his family was very pleased to see him. Where did you go? They asked. And where did you get that wonderful nose? The crocodile gave it to me," said the elephant's child. So all the elephants went to the river to get new noses from the crocodile. That is why all the elephants in the world today have long, useful noses like the elephant's child. Based on a fable by Rudyard Kipling.